Good evening. You're watching Straight Talk with Eugene Chan. I'm sure many of you have been watching the World Cup this past two weeks. And this evening, we are going to talk about when we can expect to see our national football team at the World Cup finals. So our guest this evening is the Vice Chairman of the Hong Kong Football Association, Mr. Eric Falk. Mr. Falk has been on the board of the Hong Kong Football Association since 2015, when he became its youngest member ever. He has also been elected Vice President of the East Asian Football Federation earlier this year. Welcome, Eric. Thank you, Eugene, for having me on the show. Right, Eric, um, your family has quite a legacy for the football scene in Hong Kong. Your late grandfather, um, Dr. Henry Falk, in 1970, when he was the chairman of the Hong Kong Football Association, actually invited Pelly and the Brazilian Santos team to Hong Kong at uh, a, a, a sort of a mere sum of over a million dollars at that time, which one of the flat only cost $60,000, $60, I was told, that, uh, that created quite a scene in Hong Kong. So is it all these family legacy that had make you really interested in developing football for Hong Kong? Um, well, good morning and thank you for having me. Um, I think for myself, um, it has been a privilege to be um, you know, under this so-called sporting family. But for myself, it's a personal passion. And um, I personally play football myself. And when you have an interest, um, it's an honor for me to serve the football community. So I hope to share more of my thoughts going forward and also bring more positivity to Hong Kong football development. Eric, we were involved in a charity event many years ago, That's and correct. I remember you actually play on the, on the football field. Do you still play your favourite position as a forward now in, in um, normal matches? Um, yes, I do. I do try to play as much as I can. I think with the World Cup right now, I think everyone would like to enjoy the football on the screen, but also enjoy my football on the field as well. Great. Uh, since you mentioned, I mean, World Cup has been quite a fever now in Hong Kong. What would be your favourite team to, to win this World Cup this year? I think for myself, uh, we often talk about the development of Chinese football. And I'm sure everyone's dream and being a Chinese is to host the World Cup in China one day. But with that said, um, currently I'm rooting for the English football team and I hope that they will get a good result in this tournament. Right, I'm sure the viewers are going to ask you some tips. Who will you tip for the four finalists for this cup coming uh, football final? Well, it's hard to say. I think this World Cup has many new elements. Uh, first of all, it's being held in Qatar, which is the first time the World Cup has been held in the Middle East region. Secondly, um, I think the timing of the uh, World Cup will have an effect on the result because um, this year's World Cup, due to the criteria of the Middle East, it's held in the winter. So with that said, I think that anything can happen. So what we've seen is that uh, many of the unpredictable results has uh, occurred in the last few weeks, I'm sure everyone has uh, witnessed. And going forward, um, all the best with all the teams going forward. And uh, we look forward to a fantastic final. Right, and, and I believe you will be going along with other uh, delegates to, the, to, to Doha for the finals as well? Um, that's correct, because I think I have a dual capacity. One is representing the Hong Kong Football Association, but at the same time I sit on the uh, Asian Football Confederation and East Asian Football Association. So I hope going forward is other than just attending the matches, we actually have a lot of executive meetings. And uh, with my dual role, I hope to do more for Hong Kong football. And uh, one is to get better results for the Hong Kong team. And in order to do that, we need to have more um, exchanges and more matches against international teams that we can bring back to our Hong Kong team and our Hong Kong fans to uh, enjoy going forward. Right, Eric, it's very good to see so a young and, 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 a, and sort of energetic leader for the, for the football because football is set for, to be one of the most popular sports in Hong Kong. Do you agree? Well, I think it's the most popular sport, not just Hong Kong, but globally. We can see that with the World Cup, the uh, um, commercial and also the interest around society that it generates. And going forward, we would like to bring more of the game to Hong Kong so Hong Kong can play a, more of a sporting role going forward on the international platform. I think in Hong Kong has uh, many of its uh, criteria to do this. Historically, Hong Kong has had um, a big development in football. At the same time, not just on the pitch, uh, going forward with the opening of the Kai Tak 5,000-seater stadium in 2024, um, Hong Kong will be better equipped to host more international games. But also, more importantly, um, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch. I think Hong Kong being a cosmopolitan uh, city, um, for example, in 2019, 
um, I hosted the first ever AFC Annual Football Awards, which is known as the Oscar of football, where all the uh, football stars came to Hong Kong and we were able to award uh, football um, development and also contribution to uh, football development and Asian Football Association. Right. So f going forward, I think Hong Kong has a lot of role to play and we look forward to that. Right. You know, many viewers will sort of often watch television on European football, uh, uh, English football, even Spain and or Germany. But for, for locally, I mean, how many, I mean, uh, since you said Hong Kong football is quite popular amongst the community, how many teams are there? We know there is a Premier League, but do, they, do you have any uh, formal leagues in the schools as well? Well, I think in the overall development, um, Hong Kong fans look at um, one of the criteria as a Hong Kong team um, competitiveness on the global stage. I think in Hong Kong football, um, we're very excited to share that next year in the upcoming Asian Cup, Hong Kong has managed to qualify um, for the Asian Cup after being absent for 54 years. 54. So this is uh, something that we have able to achieve and I think it's encouraging for our Hong Kong team. Secondly, um, in terms of Premier League, uh, we currently have um, uh, 10, te uh, 10 teams from uh, two increased teams from eight last year. So that we can see that there's more teams coming through. And especially in other than the Premier League, the first division, second division, third division, we are seeing a lot of the uh, district teams uh, playing a key role. So with that said, we hope that we can get the community behind the football development and attract more interest at the same time, attract more talent. Right. Eric, um, just now you mentioned about, I mean, all these good news of Hong Kong, which we're going to bring back some of the history in a minute. Um, we had Mr. Dr. Jeffrey Ma here last week, and then we talked about cricket. Mm. And he said that it's very important to have coaches, especially good local coaches. So I remember watching football for quite some time, and there are uh, foreign coaches, foreign players. So is that foreign element still an important factor? do you think, in the future of the development of Hong Kong football? I think the foreign players is a catalyst towards improving the Hong Kong football. But more importantly, I think that grooming local talent is a key factor going forward. So I think that we have to have a balance because by having foreign players, um, you can attract more audience. Um, at the same time, the local league will have a better standard. By that, hopefully the local players can learn from them and improve themselves. But at the same time, we also have to groom more of local players because we have to ask ourselves a question. Um, the local league is end goal is what is our target. And I think one of the uh, um, target or mission we try to do is to groom more local players so they can represent Hong Kong on the international stage to get better results. Right. So with that said, I think that Hong Kong team calling for the Asian Cup after being absent for 54 years uh, next year is uh, very encouraging for Hong Kong football. And I hope that uh, more players and more youth development can be developed so that we have a stronger team going forward. Eric, I'm sure many viewers are like me, that we've been mm -hmm. watch, following Hong Kong football for many years until the recent 10 years where sort of the interest kind of, sort of, uh, sort of uh, drains away. Because in the past, I remember in 1985, Hong Kong actually did beat China and reached the qualifying round of the, of the World Cup. I mean, that was fantastic times. And we actually had a big match between South China and Seiko that we have to queue up for the stadium. So how well is the national team, I mean, the Hong Kong team doing at the moment in the world ranking? Um, are we having any successes or are we on the upward trend again? I think that um, currently the Hong Kong uh, FIFA ranking is 145. Um, and at the same time, we are getting results um, on the international stage, as I mentioned, with the Asian Cup. Um, but I think Hong Kong football, or not just football, all sports is a long-term development. We can see that from uh, the Tokyo uh, Olympics, our Hong Kong Olympic team got very good results. And that brought the society to have a mm -hmm. rally a lot of support. And actually, all the athletes have been going through the youth development for over 10 to 20 years. So sporting merits doesn't come overnight. It's a long-term development. And going forward, I think Hong Kong is, has a very good equip to have a good support for our Hong Kong team. Number one, uh, with the Hong Kong um, Jockey Club, Hong Kong Football Association uh, Football Centre, which is a home for our Hong Kong training, mm -hmm. was opened in 2018. Mm -hmm. And just recently this year, we have just celebrated uh, 1 million users and most of them are our Hong Kong team, our Premier League teams, and our um, division teams. But at the same time, 
it gives the community more of a chance of access to football. Right. And I think this is the key to football development. Eric, before we go to the break, I want to ask you a very direct question. I'm sure, sure many viewers have been asking. Our mainland has over 1.4 14 billion people. And we, I'm sure we've got some great players, but for some reason, we haven't appeared in any World Cup football final yet. And I mean, of course, Hong Kong never had a chance of so being qualified as well. So when do you see that may happen? Well, I think that this is a long-term goal. I'm sure with uh, the 08 Olympic being held and the Winter Olympic being held in China recently, I think the World Cup is also one of the agenda that uh, China would like to host. But at the same time, I think that China has a long-term plan. And um, next year, they originally was going to host the um, Asian Games, which they have, uh, Asian Cup, sorry. So they have hold, uh, built a many, many infrastructure and stadiums. And also China has also expressed their interest to host the um, 2031 Women's World Cup. So with that said, I think that China has a development plan and we both look forward to hosting the World Cup in China in the upcoming future. All right, we have to take a break now and viewers, sure. please stay with us. We will be right back. Welcome back. Mr. Eric Falk, the Vice Chairman of Hong Kong Football Association is with us this evening. And we have been talking about football in Hong Kong and on the mainland and when we can expect to see our teams in the World Cup final. So Eric, you talked about there's a long-term goal and we know the presidency is a keen fan of football and, and also we have what we call a development plan for Chinese football mm -hmm. that was released in 2016 and they have got three stages. Uh, we are now end of the first stage now. The second stage is basically move on to a stronger team. One of the goals for the men's team is to be the Asia's best in 2030, even as the world's best in 2050 is a very um, a big goal ahead. Do we have a chance? Yes, I think that you know, China has a long-term development plan, um, just like the Olympic dream. I remember China you know, um, participating first time in the um, Olympics and winning its first medal only in the 80s. So I think that in 2008, uh, China hosted uh, a very memorable Beijing Olympics and we were the uh, l uh, country that won the most gold medal and medal overall. So it was just a short, you know, less than 30 years reform. So with that said, I think that uh, going before, you can see that there's a lot of um, singles and doubles uh, medalists from China. But I think going forward, they'll be putting more resources in team sports. And I believe that um, um, bring the World Cup home and also having a good national football curriculum and result is also the China dream that we all hope for. And this is something that we're striving for. Right, Eric, what will be sort of the main difficulties you think we'll be facing in terms of challenges to make that happen? I think in terms of Hong Kong, um, our main uh, biggest um, obstacle is uh, venues because in order to have more venues, we can do more training and only with more training, we can improve ourselves. And I think one that there's a lot of synergy with mainland China, definitely with the, through the Greater Bay Area, because this is one of the areas that our football community is discussing, is that although Hong Kong has limited land, how can we use our neighboring cities to expand the football development and have more football pitches in order to improve and exchange? And going forward with the China football development plan, I think that is the allocation of resources. And going forward is how do we have more youth development by having more resources to support more people um, joining football leagues and football school competitions in order to have more talent. Having a more pool would mean that you have, you have a better selection team. So I think that it's an overall development. But with that said, we hope to encourage more youth to join our football. And by having a more football population, we can have a better team going forward. Um, when you mentioned both Hong Kong and mainland, I'm sure being with a Chinese culture background, I mean, mm -hmm. study or acad academia excellence is always what most parents are striving for the, for the kids. Do you think there's a, a change in, in sort of a trend now that uh, the families are more willing to have the children invest in sporting like football? Definitely. Um, I think that there's a big opportunity and also a chance right now because I think as parents are becoming more encouraging and supporting um, their kids into the sports sector, I think we have to have a st stable, sustainable business model for athletes. I mean, the goal is very simple. I think that with the attitude of the new Hong Kong government, um, you can see that sports is being restructured into a new bu buru. 
um, and now it's under the Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau. And with that said, I think that sports has a new um, pathway for it to develop. I'll give a few examples. Um, first of all, I think that by having this uh, new bureau, then um, the government is setting a new blueprint for sports development and football development. Mm -hmm. And from it being uh, elite sports, um, a community sport, and also mega event sports. There was a three emphasis before. From the previous government, um, this is, acts as a new basis for this new government. But on top of this, they have added two new elements of how do you make sports more professional and also more sustainable going forward. So what does sustainable mean? Sustainable means that how do we engage other than government funding, we can encourage more commercial entity to support. And with more commercial entity and society getting behind sports and football, um, we can actually have more resources to allocate to football clubs and also more importantly, football players. Right. And so with that said, I think that that will give football players a career to uh, develop and give them give parents more encouragement to um, help kids get involved with sports. And this is one thing that we're tackling right now. Right. Um, as you said earlier, I think youth training is one of the fundamentals. Exactly. And it takes time, as you exactly. said, I'm sure everyone will agree. And being a young player yourself, I mean, moving, playing like 20 years, I'm like, what specific suggestions will you have for a really coordinated youth training? Because we talk about youth training all the time. I yep. mean, like, decades ago, every team has a, a preparation team. Right. So, but it's not really coordinated. Right. So what suggestions would you have for the, the industry in terms of youth training? Um, this is a very important question. Uh, we did ask ourselves this uh, recently, and uh, we have to come up with some concrete plans. I think that uh, youth development is a key uh, component of our Hong Kong football. And although all the um, Premier League teams have uh, their youth team, um, two years ago, the Hong Kong Football Association launched an uh, uh, initiative um, and it's called the Hong Kong U23. And this is a youth development plan where we actually comprise of a young football team that plays in the Hong Kong Premier League. With the goal of number one, there is no foreign players, so it's all local players. Secondly is most of the players are all under 23. And then lastly is there can only be five players that's over under 23 to help these young kids develop. So this is a specific youth development plan where we tackle um, youth players, but more importantly, local players, so that they have a chance to play in the Premier League every week. And then they can improve, and so that the Hong Kong team going forward will have more um, elite youth uh, players. Right. So I think that that is a very meaningful program, and I'm uh, very honoured to support and to uh, develop this initiative. Right, are those players professional, full-time professionals, or they are still part-time? Um, they are, you know, professionals at the same time. Uh, many of you know the World Cup is going on right now, but also with the Paris Olympic and the Hangzhou Asian Games, actually Olympic and Asian Games uses under 23 players only in the team. So this actually Premier League team, which is the Hong Kong U23, we are actually grooming the, the uh, a team and players that is actually going to be representing Hong Kong in the Olympics and Asian Games coming up. So with that said, we hope to have, uh, you know, get them prepared through the Premier League. So when they represent Hong Kong in major international competition, then um, they can hopefully get result and at the same time give them a world platform to represent Hong Kong and do us proud. Right, Eric, you just said that Hong Kong now we're going to have a sort of a program that not only as a youth team but be able to play in the Premier League and the parents are getting more ready to support them. So all these are good factors. Yes. So what else do you think, what will be the most urgent issue that you think will, will be, need to be tackled on top of these two matters we just discussed? Well, I mentioned that on uh, July the 1st we have a new Hong Kong SAR government and we, uh, Hong Kong Football Association tried to implement the sports policy. Um, at the same time, I think through this new brew being set up, we were able to talk to the football stakeholders to see what concerns they have, what, how can we improve it, and how do we communicate closer with the government and stakeholders. And one of the top key uh, concern is a venue provider. Because as we know, Hong Kong land is scarce, um, so that there's limited uh, football pitches. That limits the amount of time that each team can train, um, whether it's men's youth, women's or futsal. 
So with that said, I think that going forward, we have uh, big plans. And one of the plans is, can we suggest to the government to have an initiation where we can turn many of the industrial buildings or rooftops mm -hmm. into more futsal pitches so that people can have more access? Secondly, a few years ago, government have launched an initiative for how to turn many of the multi-usage, including seven-a-side football pitches around Hong Kong, into five-a-side pitches. So that, that will be recognised as the um, futsal, which is the five-a-side, so that we can have an international um, standard so that Hong Kong actually can be more competitive. And mm. lastly, I think that Hong Kong football can look at the Greater Bay Area and look beyond our borders. With that said, there's many football pitches and training facility within one hour radius. And going forward, we'll be studying and seeing how can we help our Hong Kong football development, especially the football team and youth training, to use our neighboring football pitches so them, for them to have allowed access to let them train and improve our game. Right, Eric. So so now not only we have the parents, we have the, uh, the, the youth program, now we have the government support. I think I must ask you the last question. Sure. Where is all the money coming from? I think commercial sponsors is very important. Look at golf, look at tennis, yep. big prize money. Yep. Do we have enough pr uh, commercial sponsors for Hong Kong football in particular? I think that the key to uh, sports or football development is creating value. Once you have value, then you can have the commercial element. So going forward with Hong Kong football, we hope to work closer with our media partners. Um, this year, I have a good news to share with everyone that um, through our Football Premier League, we're working with our online um, on.cc partners. At the same time, for the first time this season, we're working with RTHK, which is um, providing uh, direct free TV for many of our football right. our Premier League games. And also working with TVB this year for the first time, right. uh, providing um, our Hong Kong FA Cup live free coverage. Right. So that will be generating a lot of interest and I believe that once you have um, commercial um, viewership, then you can create value. Right. And when you can get commercial value, you can have more partners, and that can help provide with funding. Right. So going forward, I think with the uh, commercial value, with government support, and also with Jockey Club, and lastly with FIFA funding, together that makes a pool of um, and, uh, resources to help our Hong right. Kong and club teams. Right, I must say that when I was at our THK Board Advisors, yep. this is something we push for, yep. and it's very happy to see the football now being telecasted by our THK. So many thanks to Eric for sharing your insights into football, both here in Hong Kong and on the mainland. We hope that the local football sector will be able to overcome the challenges he has outlined today, and we look forward to seeing our five-star red flag being raised at future international football events, such as the World Cup final soon. Have a great evening and good night. Thank you.